Here we are with Valerie Uvarov. We are Project Camelot, and we are very pleased to be here in St. Petersburg, Russia. And how do you say that in Russian? Sankt? Sankt Petersburg. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a beautiful city. Lovely. And you are a very interesting man. We're, we're very, very pleased to be here and welcomed into your home. Um, you've been a very gracious host, and thank you very much for that. You're more than welcome, my friend. Thank you. Um, so, we want to begin with, with whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you would like to tell us about yourself. To begin with, we would be curious as to your history, how you came to be where you are today. We know that you're working with the government. It, is this true at this time? Well, yeah, more, more or less. Okay. Actually, uh, everything was changed in my life on 1989. Mm -hmm. Before I was a professional musician, I was studying as a mathematician, and also I was studying as an artist, or wow. a painter. But at that year, um, when I suddenly noticed that the music I play, the whole life I'm living on, is a little bit different to, to something that is going on in reality around me. I have just understood that our civilization, our planet, has a certain or kind of problems. And it was a choice for me whether I play music as I did before or I will try to take my part in the solution of that problem that I saw around mm. me in this life and I made a decision mm. on that, on that uh, 1989 I have visited a UFO conference here oh. in Russia and I met a lot of very interesting people and investigators over there mm. I have a lot of interesting stories mm. and something just changed in me I, everything was turned upside down and I, and I decided I deny music I deny everything in my life mm. and I decided to be fully devoted to investigation of UFOs actual history of our planet and our civilization and trying to take my own part in making this life, our civilization, better than it was before. So, was it, were you prompted to go to this UFO conference because you might have had an encounter uh, with the visitors, if you would call them that, um, prior to that, consciously, or was this unconscious that you, that you went, you were prompted to go to the conference but you weren't sure why? In my childhood, mm -hmm. I I have encountered someone, uh, but at that time I didn't realize what took place. Mm. For me it was like something, well, maybe usual, strange but usual. Mm -hmm. Then I started to see strange visions, universe, flying, spacecrafts, the other th things, I was, you know, crazy about any films, any books about, you know, extraterrestrials and, you know, fantasies. Mm. Probably it was always inside of me. I see. But on that year, 1989, it was like a deformation mm -hmm. and transformation. Mm -hmm. I have suddenly understood, clearly understood that this new way is the real way for me. Mm. I can... How old were you then, do you know? Well, it approximately. was... Approximately? Yeah. It was 36 years. Ah, really? Just 36 years, mm -hmm. and everything was changed. And I'm happy about that, I tell you. But mm. really, now, I'm a very lucky man. I do what I love to do. Mm. And I have, I have made some very important discoveries, and I hope 
and I am always sure we will talk about it today yes. and I will share some very interesting ideas. And you've written some books as well, is yeah, this true? Yeah, sure. I have written some books, some articles. Uh -huh. Also, I, I do publish Nexus magazine here mm. in the Russian language. Okay. I'm a main editor. Wonderful. And originally we saw you as associated being interviewed as part of Secret Space. This was Chris Everard's uh, mm. video on the space program. And you also have knowledge about this. Is this true? Yeah. Okay. That's true. Okay. And you have some kind of back th background in mathematics? Can you yeah, tell us yeah. what that is? Um, it's a St. Petersburg Polytechnical Institute, uh -huh. where I have studied it. I see. And is this um, a formal degree that you have, or is this some years of study? No, it, it, it just happened that it was some years of study. Mm -hmm. some of and then, when this year came, and I have denied everything, and I just was concentrately, completely focused on investigation. Mm -hmm. So I left everything and started to do what I started to do. But at the same time, being a musician, professional musician, a painter, and well, on one hand, a mathematician, mm -hmm. it's much easier for me to understand what's going on. I can see one event, or let's say, object from three different point of views, as a musician, as a mathematician, well, it's much easier. So you have the artistic side, you have the scientific yeah. side. Yeah. This is very interesting. Um, and then you have, uh, what would you say? I mean, the music, music and art and, and mathematics. This is uh, a lot of similarities, right? On one hand, yes. Uh -huh. On one hand, mm -hmm. I can look at things very freely. Mm -hmm. I'm not hidden in a small box mm -hmm. of um, of a science. Do you know? Right. Uh, Mathematician can look at the world just like a mathematician. Mm -hmm. Okay? Me not. I'm trying to see the event from the different point of views. And, it, and it's understandable for me. Mm -hmm. Especially now when I need to see something hidden behind, for example, some events in the history of our civilization. I need to open mind mm -hmm. and try to understand what stood behind this event. So, I need to have a very broad view and to be a musician and artist and mathematician, it's, it's very, very useful. Now, your current job or title within the UFO, uh, the government, and do you have a title? You know what I'm saying? Well, actually it happened like this. Those people in, uh, in military and government mm -hmm. who were engaged for many years of investigation of yes. these UFOs. Uh -huh. They knew about me. Yes. And uh, they have invited me to be a part of their interests. I see. Uh -huh. it's, actually, it was like this. Mm. So, and they have invited me, and for example, there is a, a couple of organizations or whose help I use in investigation. I am talking to you for openly. I mm -hmm. use their help. Mm -hmm. When I need to get access to hidden data bank or some information which you cannot find in a library. So for this reason, I just part of military organization mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm able to get access to anything. And you have, you've, you've done investigations on the pyramid and pyramid energy as well and perhaps they gave you access to the pyramids or the sphinx? Yeah, 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 yeah? sure, uh -huh. sure. Yes. But on the other hand, I'm interested in the science mm. standing behind pyramid. This is the key moment, science. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely sure that those people whom we know or whom we call hierophants, ancient Egyptians, actually not Egyptians, Atlantean priests. Mm -hmm. It was post-Atlantean priests. They were scientists of a very, very high level. Mm -hmm. I'm completely sure about that. And I was, and I actually am deeply interested in knowledge which they embodied in pyramids, yes. in the temples, mm -hmm. and anything that they have used, first of all, to 
develop their abilities, energetic abilities, which later on helps to open up super sensitivity uh, on one hand, and then on the other hand, clear voice. Most of those abilities which they had, and you know, they were very unusual abilities, they were very, very powerful people. Mm -hmm. We now uh, developed in a quite different way. So that's why it was my deepest interest to see what actually they have reached, they have filtered, they have received. Well, pretty soon investigating, investigating ancient texts, I also came to the conclusion all the knowledge that they had, they have received as a gift from a very, very high extraterrestrial civilization. And when I understood it, I said, now what I need to do is to try to find any even small piece of that knowledge left anywhere on the wall of a temple, in the pyramids, in an ancient text. I need to fill it out, to gather it here on my table, analyze and bring the whole knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, you started this quest, I assume, after this experience and this realization you had in 89. So now we are in 2007, right? Yeah. So for this number of years, you've been working quite a long time. And you've written books about pyramids. This, the pyramids, and, and you're building a pyramid, I understand. Yeah. Is this correct? Now, yeah. Now we're building a big stone pyramid. Okay. According to the, those knowledge which actually I have received investigating the ancient uh, pyramids of different civilizations. And what is this knowledge that you... Can you tell me of a couple of key things that you are building... A, you are building actually more than one pyramid eventually here mm -hmm. in Russia. Um, not so far from here, you said. Yeah, it's just a hundred kilometers from St. Petersburg. Uh -huh. We have found a very, very ancient place where people uh, were making uh, like a rituals wow. for a few hundred years. Okay. And it, it's an earthquake, you know, like a breaking, mm. with a beam of energy getting out of the ground. So, actually, I have done everything according to the ancient uh, canon, you know, like a, uh, the knowledge, how it should be done. So we found the right place. Mm. Actually, there are very, th very good three places, three very good places there. But now we are trying to set a, we are actually setting a pyramid on one of these places. I see. So it's an energy vortex that yes. you have found. Yeah, yeah, pretty, it's pretty strong energy vortex. Uh -huh. It's, it's a key moment. We should do it. But at the same time, I came to a strict conclusion that what we actually know, I mean, our civilization knows about the pyramids and their effects. It's almost nothing to reality oh. in comparison to reality. Okay. This is the reason we have decided to set up a pyramid made according to the knowledge. Not like a you know pyramid uh, shapes or some proportions which mm -hmm. actually we met investigating different pyramids. No it's too it's too small uh, part of information. No, it's not enough. Yeah. There, there should be much more. First of all, uh, when the ancient priests were constructing the pyramids, they were doing it, trying to tune on a certain person. For example, for Pharaoh, or a, a priest. The Kyops pyramid is quite a different instrument. And I was always interested, what knowledge, what made this pyramid a powerful instrument which could not only influence your energetic system, develop your abilities. Mm -hmm. First of all, how to get access, now listen very attentively, to the parallel dimensions mm -hmm. of the earth mm -hmm. and time. Yes. It's a key moment, mm -hmm. because there you can find history, information about the history of planet Earth, mm -hmm. and not only about previous time, also about our future. So you can get something that you, you, you even cannot imagine. 
This is the reason why I have devoted the whole book, which I just wrote and published here in Russia. It's, it's the name of the book, is the, the Pyramids. Okay. It's this one. I think this, it's, it's going to be the same uh, color in English language too. I think okay. this book will be published in English language in the nearest future. Mm -hmm. And there you can see the translation of the ancient texts. You will feel and understand the interests of ancient priests, why they spent so many years and so many, you know, money also, just to set up a huge pyramid. Why? Just to place to bury a pharaoh. No, no, no. It's quite a for, quite for different purposes. Mm -hmm. And we have decided to get the same possibilities now setting up this pyramid. So we have found a place, uh -huh. we have found a knowledge. Inside of this new pyramid we are constructing now, there will be 25 and reason, uh, resonators, so room resonators. Now you see, in the pyramid of Keops, you, you, you know at least three, okay? Three rooms. In our pyramid, it will be 25 pyramids. I see. But are you talking about also using the crystals, in the power we, of the crystals? We are going to set up there energy sources. Mm -hmm. Not just crystals, it's energy sources. Okay. Because if you set up a pyramid, Without energy source, you will never get what you at least imagine to get. The vortex, is is this not the energy source, the major? Or? No. No? No. It's just, you know, it's, um, it's like a guess, okay? It's like a guess. But to, to get a power out of it, you need a motor. Right. So, what I call energy source, it's a, it's a device. Ah. It's a certain device okay. which you put inside of the pyramid in a certain place and the pyramid will affect the space and time making kind of a combustion of space. Mm. And here starts something very, very interesting and unusual. So we came to this understanding mm -hmm. and we immediately decided to start uh, construction of the pyramid and we have started to do this at the end of the last year and I think that at the end of this October 2007 we will complete construction. Now, have you shared your knowledge with um, other countries at all? Or is this purely inside Russia? Actually, it's purely inside Russia. Uh -huh. Because this would be very interesting, I'm sure, to most, well, certainly to American researchers but sure, other sure. countries I, I, as well. I love some American researchers, like I love, for example, Graham Hancock, uh, and I love uh -huh. and Gilbert, and the other, and four, many others. Mm -hmm. I love them very much because mm -hmm. they have affected me I deeply. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to say thanks to them for mm -hmm. all they have done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the same time, they brought to, to light, to people, some very unusual ideas, mm -hmm. saying that, listen, just look attentively on the pyramids, or look attentively on something, some other things. Mm -hmm. They just point out that there is something unusual, but mostly they were not giving an answers. Right. Okay. What I'm doing, I'm trying to give an answers. Mm -hmm. More or less, I'm lucky to find an answers. And the book, The Pyramids, is the book having an answers. Now, you mentioned over our short, lovely meal that we had, that you had um, sort of some interactions with these visitors that kind of guided you on the journey that you're on now. Is this right? Yeah, And on gave hand. you uh, sort of some insight into where you should go with this. Yes, on the one hand, yes. And you call them, what did you call them? I, I would call them visitors. Okay. To say extraterrestrials, on the one hand, you can call them extraterrestrials. But the, on the other hand, when you start to understand how actually this space is constructed, you come to, you come to understanding that the, the most you know, distant place in our galaxy is less than one minute to go to, uh, to the Earth. Less than one minute. 
it's, it means, well, according to what we know about our planet, and in comparison with the, the period which our civilization is now here on this planet, mm -hmm. this the people, human people, are visitors here. I they see. are so long, so many times, so many thousands of years here, mm -hmm. controlling the situation. So, so I would say them, as as the as those people who is trying to keep the whole situation on the planet in a certain uh, certain path. So when I met these visitors in my life for the first time, it was pretty long ago. I was uh, in expedition. Uh, my first simple question was, well, uh, what are you doing here? As uh, on that moment, as any normal citizens, normal people, even in America, just having ideas about their abilities, they are flying, they have so unusual possibilities. Well, what they're doing here? What is their interest? The answer was pretty simple, and at the same time, this answer just turned up my life. One of those whom I saw said, if you want to understand our interests, you should learn the history of your civilization, your pre-history. Mm -hmm. Then you will understand our interests. From that moment, I started to do my best investigating the history of our civilization. And now I can tell you, I came to understanding what took place and what their main interest is in. Okay, what is their main interest? do you think? Is it in the future and future events that they feel are coming down? Or is this a genetic interest in no, our no. species? First what of all, I would like to explain to you that if you want to get just one answer, you will never get the right answer. Ah. It's On one hand, it's pretty complicated. Okay. Then, if you at least would prefer to make a shortest step forward to understanding. What I would recommend to you is just take, if you can, and understand that there are no past and future. There is only present. Mm. Now. What's going on now? For me, at the beginning, it was like nothing. I thought, what it means? <laughs> not past, there is no future, everything is going on now. Mm -hmm. I had to investigate and to be inside of this you know, situation for, for a pretty long time. And then, when I understood how it works, and it's really so, then you start to deeply understand that if you plan, if you want to change the planet, the humanity, you know, actually something for better, Mm -hmm. develop it in a, in a right way, mm -hmm. you need to know what took place over there. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you need to know what will happen in, for us in our future. But as soon as this future for us is actually already taking place now, so from your future you can go and get into contact with you in the past mm -hmm. just to help yourself to change something in your life in the past for better mm -hmm. then if something will happen different your present will be changed mm -hmm. and future will be changed for better it's only one way so what they are doing here they are trying to keep and to somehow control these multiple dimension events of our life mm -hmm. so that we would understood how it's all constructed. They never interfered. They only can give you just a small tiny idea. So just a hint. And then if you are a right person you should understand what you will do then Will, you, will be your personal responsibility. Mm 
mm -hmm. for the future. It's not like this, like some teachers or people say, well, extraterrestrials and gods, they are so perfect, they will control me, even if I will make a mistake, they will help me to correct my mistakes, and no, it's not, in reality, it's not like this. What they can do is just to give some hints, mm -hmm. but then you take your, you take your own personal responsibility. So, have you studied Eastern philosophy and um, you know enlightenment and knowledge about the chakras and so on? Sure, sure. I, mm -hmm. I did it. I, I did it completely. But in some some couple of years later, I came to a strict understanding that if you start or you will try to see what stands behind this knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, using the knowledge, for example, of uh, Buddhism mm -hmm. or Hinduism, mm -hmm. you will never ever get reality. Mm. It's impossible. Because in, 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 in the way, in the, in the form which you can use and understand, this knowledge stayed, I, I, I usually say alive, only in Egypt only in Egypt. In, and in my book I'm showing these texts. Mm -hmm. If you take Hinduism or Eastern tradition, it's so deformed, it's so already turned in a different parts and pieces, you will never ever get the understanding of reality. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I deeply dived, I would say, in Egyptology. Uh -huh. working with text because there you can see the beginning of the whole story mm -hmm. and in this book for example I'm just, I gave already this very very old um, knowledge that was named or called in ancient times Kabbalah On this is the knowledge of a unity of construction of human and universe. Mm -hmm. How it's constructed actually it's one and the same thing. So if you want to understand it you, sh you should start from the beginning and this beginning, not deformed beginning, you can find only in Egypt, not, nowhere else. Now when you said you were contacted on an expedition, were you in Egypt at the time of your contact? No, in Siberia. Siberia? Yeah, it was expedition connected to my uh, investigation of Tunguska case. Ah. Now, we want to hear about this, Tunguska, because you have just written a new book about this, is that right? Actually, I am already fi I'm going to finish it. Uh, actually, the whole book will be devoted to the, actually, 100 university, 100 years university. Oh, yes, it's this coming year, uh, yes. right? Next year. Next year. It's mm -hmm. coming already. Yes. So, and this book will give the idea of what took place over there. Actually, you will get in answers. You know, uh, within the last 70 years of investigation, scientists at least have got and brought to people around 300 different hypotheses. Mm -hmm. And well, most we... of them are so different, people cannot put it together. In this book, I am putting all together and giving you, a dis dis I'm describing the whole event so that all these different hypotheses are coming together as the one. I see. We met with a scientist and um, Bill, perhaps you could explain his point of view um, yesterday. Yeah, um, we met Chernobrov. with um, Chernobrov. Yeah. Chernobrov. Mm -hmm. And we asked him about uh, Tunguska. And he said that there was a similar event that happened near Lake Baikal. Uh, much more recently, yeah. and he felt that the, uh, that the traces of radioactivity that uh, were detected in the Tunguska region uh, could be explained by this being the impact of a comet, and he felt that some of the radioactive isotopes that were discovered there actually are present in comets, and he felt that the Baikal incident uh, suggested that that was a reasonable hypothesis. He was very careful not to present conclusions about it, but um, that's what he felt his best guess was. We'd, yeah, I know. Welcome I, I, yeah, I know, I know this. 
So Absolutely. does he agree or do you agree with him or is are your is your understanding different or uh, to say agree or not agree it it wouldn't it wouldn't give you a right uh, approach okay. my own approach actually uh, working and trying to find an answer what took place in Tunguska mm -hmm. I have learned a lot of uh, materials a lot of results of investigation of different uh, scientists, and I'm very grateful for them, mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. They gave me a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I would never do it myself, never. But at the same time, when I came to understanding what took place there, mm -hmm. and what is critically important, is that people have described and explained what took place took place in Tunguska, or I mean this event, they gave this answer in a few years of this event. Actually, they did it almost immediately. The problem was that when scientists representing different fields of science came to Tunguska and started to ask witnesses what they saw, they naturally uh, just took the whole story in the small pieces because those people who had a botanic education they tried to explain the event from their point of view mm -hmm. astronomers mm -hmm. they tried to explain events like uh, comet or meteorite mm -hmm. uh, geologists they, they gave their own understanding so mm -hmm. they tear up the whole story into small pieces, mm -hmm. three more than 300 small pieces. Okay. But at the same time, you should understand, because that event was the one event. And there is only one truth stands behind it. And actually, if you would just ask yourself, you would, you would agree that something, well, on one hand, pretty simple took place which we cannot see, because all traces are there in Tunguska area, everything is there. And if we do not see these traces, it doesn't mean that something else took place there. The whole story, the whole explanation, on the one hand, is out of even possibility for human people to accept their, their reality. Okay. Uh, what I would say at the beginning now, shortly, that was meteorite. Okay. Yes, that was meteorite. But this meteorite was carrying a dangerous bacteria. And somebody shut it down, destroyed it, as they did it many, many times. And they do it each century for a few times. When I was investigating, you know, the documents, I found a very interesting story. Listen. Shortly, when Stalin had learned about the Tunguska case, and especially um, uh, Lavrenti Beria, it's a very, very special man who was subjected to investigate and to influence development of nuclear weapons in Russia at that time. He has gotten information about unusual event, very looking like a nuclear explosion, but took place in 1908. Mm -hmm. So when they have investigated uh, pictures, they sent an expedition, military expedition, to that area. And that military expedition was, well, in a civil dresses, they had only one task to gather information. And now look, when they asked some people in the area of explosion, people said very, very shortly after explosion, the local indigenous people saw a group of 
strange visitors mm. having very highly developed equipment on them on 1908, mm. investigating soils. Mm -hmm. So they saw them. Tell me who they were. Very highly equipped people on 1908, who they were. Mm. It's just a short beginning. But at the same time, I can tell you, reality is amazing, amazing. There are somebody who is preserving the planet Earth mm -hmm. because of this meteorite having a dangerous bacteria. I see. Somebody have created, you know, like a constructed, what I personally call like an installation. Part of this installation is in, the, in Siberia and it's active. On the other hand, what is, and I'm very sorry about it, the one of the um, device having close connection to this installation is situated in China and China already found it and they are investigating it. Are you saying they have something that contains this bacteria? No, they are investigating a part of equipment that was shooting down uh. meteorite. So is this, 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 is, this, this the visitors, serious. this is the visitors equipment, is it not? Yes, uh -huh. I, I know exactly, they found it. Mm. And they, they do investigate it already. Right. And in the nearest future, you will be a witnesser of a jump of, I mean, development of some technologies, technologies I in see. China. Okay. Much, much more, mm. you know, ah, the advanced that you even can imagine. Unfortunately, mm. they do it. I mean, investigation in Russia. No, still not. How did you find this out, though? Can you tell us? Well, it's... No. If you will... <laughs> if if you will really allow you me... No, okay. I, I will keep it, okay? Ah, Just, okay. But, I, but believe Very me, they, they, they already do okay. it. Okay, this is... We have a lot of this material over Siberia. Ah. A lot. I, I would say thousands of tons of these materials. Hmm. But, you know, our science and uh, representatives of our science. They, are, they do not interest it at all. I see, really? No. Well, now, when your book is released, it's not yet released here, is that correct? I mean, about Tunguska case. Yes. It, it will be released ne next year. Okay. So, they, once your book comes out, perhaps this will change? I, I'm not sure about this. No? No. This is the reason why what I do plan personally. I want to organize some Expedition, one or two expeditions, mm. international expeditions. Fabulous. Some people from America, Russia, Germany, Australia mm -hmm. move there so that when it will happen, it should be under a reasonable control of our humanity. I see. Because there, just at this particular moment, just believe me, you have nothing to do just to believe me. Mm -hmm. They technology there at the moment mm -hmm. is so developed, you even can, cannot imagine. Okay, now I have a jump for you because you said also during our dinner conversation that there were three events that were, I guess, meteors that had hit this planet at different periods of time in history and changed our planet. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then you said Tunguska Guska was a tiny event in relation to these bigger sure, events. Sure, sure. You know, if you uh, just read materials mm -hmm. brought forward to people by astronomers about asteroids, defense system, mm -hmm. which actually Americans are working over, you know, you will find um, 
idea is that, for example, uh, big asteroids, maybe one kilometer in diameter, are hitting planet Earth maybe one time in 300,000 years, or maybe even in one million year. Mm -hmm. When I was investigating the ancient texts, I came to not only understanding. In my book, The Pyramids, I'm giving the ancient texts everything. I mean, like translation, you will see everything there. That the asteroids with a diameter more than one kilometer uh, took, I mean, or hit the planet at least, at least two times within the last 16,000 years, at least. Actually, three times. But first two, and especially those whom I name uh, Azores, which hit the planet in the area of Azores uh, Islands, mm -hmm. it took place exactly 13,660 years ago from the autumn of this year. Exactly. Hmm. And in the book I'm giving exact cal calculations and ancient calendars right. showing you the exact date where it took place. Now are you saying that this might be a cyclical event? Yeah. This is... You did it, my friend. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. This is the most important idea hmm. that uh, those ancient calendars, Mayan calendars, mm -hmm. and some of the ancient Egyptian calendars, which I, uh, which I call like a catastrophic calendars, I would I say see. like this. Okay. They are giving uh, information about the periods mm. when huge, ast huge asteroids are hitting the planet Earth. And those ancient hierophants, they were trying to bring or to give or to leave for, for following future people information mm -hmm. that in a certain moment a following asteroid will hit the planet. You should be ready for this. Okay. Otherwise, people can be, you know. So, you, you are, so to jump from here we can say that there is another event scheduled sometime in our future in which this may occur again. I would say that the most interesting and unusual event which is ahead of us and very close, very very close to us. And are you saying t the Mayan calendar 2012? Right. Around this, this time? Yes, yes, yes. Now yes. is, is this is it your understanding? I don't know if you've studied the work of Zachariah Sitchin. Yeah, I know his work very, mm -hmm. very good. And are you talking about the return of Planet X? Are you talking about the, the dwarf, the uh, brown dwarf, which is talked about by scientists because we have some contacts who are talking about what they call a brown dwarf, uh, with a, uh, I guess, a, a planet that is accompanying it um, in a circular orbit, uh, this orbit being a very long, elongated no, twenty-six thousand. No. I know this. This is this not what theory, you're saying. Very, mm -hmm. very good. Yes. No, the reality is quite different. Okay. Again and again and again. Even now, at this moment, I would like to repeat again what I'm working with are the ancient texts, yes. which you can use and read and interpret. These ancient texts say that 13,660 years ago when Azor's asteroid hit the planet Earth, planet Earth lost its orbit and started to fly away from the Sun. Somebody whom we call, now, as the curators, somebody, took a huge part of destroyed planet Malik, which this huge part of this planet now we name a moon. And this ancient text, Egyptian text, 
give you exact description so that somebody took this huge part by this piece took it into magnetic field of the planet Earth increased the mass of the planet Earth and fixed the planet where it is now before planet Earth the moving around the Sun with a period of 360 days when it moved away from the Sun it was fixed there with the help of the Moon now we have 365 days so right after that they have created Venus mm. and put Venus where it is now ancient texts even Mayan calendar says that the Venus was created 3113 year before Christ okay okay so we, everything we heard. but what took place also those who were living on Mars in ancient texts say exactly those who gave the knowledge to the previous civilization they were from Mars and Malek but now we see this planet uh, Malek is destroyed we have an asteroid belt around no planet nice. Mars was attacked by asteroids lost its atmosphere moved away from this original place but that somebody had fixated him also it's there but those who lived on those planets they have moved to one other planet of a solar system I don't know how but the idea is that this planet now is on the same orbit as the Earth but right behind the Sun quite opposite we are moving with the same speed and this is the reason why we mostly cannot see it but at the same time there are some periods when we can see this planet and astronomers have seen this planet and are registered this planet and in my book I am giving the full you know, description of those events are you saying these these people? Are you calling them the Anunnaki or not? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you call them. Sure. Doesn't matter. But is it the people that are are? It's the same reference that, that some researchers are using for this group of people who actually came to Earth. Yeah. Originally and brought and and genetically engineered our our species. Is no. this I, I how would, you see? I wouldn't say genetically, you know. No. No, it's, it was a little bit different. Okay. Genetic effects took place on planet Earth very, very long ago. Much far. I mean, this event is quite different. So, the most idea is that on, 90, on 2012, mm -hmm. we are about to witness, I would say, destability of solar system. Uh-huh causing asteroids no no it will be in connection with unusual activity of the sun of the sun yeah okay unusual activity of the sun on one hand mm -hmm. will affect instability of the planet behind the earth behind the sun sorry I see. behind the sun okay. that's the first thing but on the other thing there is another very very important key moment. If you remember ancient Mayan texts, you will find some interesting idea. This, this text say, previous star teachers will go away and new ones will come here. And we, I mean people I'm working with, we have found and understood a mechanism what stands behind this to understand this we we need to add I mean to now to give idea of a certain energetic mechanism of the planet Earth which is closely connected with time and space this what what you can see now here 
This is a geographical axis. Okay? Yes. This is magnetical axis. Okay. So when it starts to rotate, it forms like this. Okay. So the central focal point is here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see? Mm -hmm. This is the 30 and 35 latitude. This is exactly where all civilization of the former world have developed. China, Egypt, mine, everything is here. Okay. So now look. Investigating scientific materials, we came to understanding that this part, when it goes wider or different way, this, this pulsation here and here has a period of four years. Four years period. But now, something very unusual started to take place. This part started to go wider, wider, and this focal point started to move to the north. Okay. On 2012, this focal point, point will move on the northern pole. And field of time and space will be opened. And this is here we will be witnesses of appearance of a stargate. Uh. Okay. Stargate. Uh -huh. Through this stargate, former teachers will go away and new ones will come. And everything, all this event will be closely connected with activity of the sun mm. and appearance of instability of the planet behind the sun. So we are about not and only to see this planet, and it means we will be very close to start reasonable, understandable contact with our predecessors. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that um, also the movement of, if I understand it correctly, our galaxy in close into the center of the of, of the galactic plane, do you see anything um, uh, what you of mean, this influence? What you mean, when the, the solar system fly through the galactic plane, this is the moment when we go through meteorite flow and asteroid flow. I see. And that's why periodically mm -hmm. we move through it and we have these asteroid impacts. Mm -hmm. But what I'm talking now yes. has a quite different period. I understand. Quite different period. Okay. But a very unusual period. This and are you saying we're going into a different dimension? Are Not we. We, we will be the here. Earth? We, will, we are here and we will stay here, mm -hmm. where we are now. Right. But those who was controlling the solar system, I mean curators, we will be witnesses how they will go, someone will go away and new ones will come here, they will come out here. I see, and, but who are you working with, if you can tell me your team? Is this Scientists, scientists, philosophers? All of them, but mostly scientists. Uh -huh. Scientists. So there is scientific basis for this understanding. Yeah. This uh -huh. is what, what I'm giving you now in a simple way. It's pure science. Okay. Pure science. I understand. So the stargates that's opening up, is this at the North Pole, you're yes, saying? Yes, North Pole. And what kind of preparations are you making is this part of the reason why you're building the pyramids? To on hand, yes. bring on the energy, yes. uh, facilitate no, no, no. First the First of all, what, what I would say, first of all, uh, what, would, what will take place on planet Earth will critically affect his human health. Okay. Those ones who will, will, who will have, you know, to this moment, not good health, they will be dying of uh, heart attacks, you know, blood vessels problems, you know. Okay. We came to understanding, it's a key moment, uh, those people who is developing inner abilities, energetic abilities, mm -hmm. clear ones, mm -hmm. something like this, 
and even in case if they are doing it without knowledge which that, that, that was left behind by ancient priests. 70% of them, even 80% of them, are dying from cancer. Cancer. What it means and how it happens? An answer in, is in the field which we can now try to explain. Look, when somebody starts to meditate, trying to get a cosmic energy, okay? Mm -hmm. You start to meditate and you know, like, imagine the energy is coming into you and it happens. Mm -hmm. That's all right. When you start, when you are a bearer of this energy, okay, your own inner biological time is slowing down. On one hand, that's okay, because you will feel much more, you know, energy inside. Mm -hmm. Your clairvoyance will be opened. This is what we need. But when the phone started to ring, or you need to go back home to do what you should do for your family, right? Mm -hmm. You just switch off from this energy mm -hmm. vortex. Immune system made, you know, this like a... Uh, the immune system tries to return back to the normal position. Mm. Okay? Mm. Speeding up inner time because you have slowed it down. Mm -hmm. Immune system immediately starts to make it just speeding up. Speeding up of inner time causes beginning of a cancer. Mm. Immediately. This is the reason why the world well known teachers like Jiddu Krishnamurti, Ramana Maharishi, Vivekananda, Sri Aurobindo, Mira Alfassa, the mother actually, Madame Blavatsky, mm. Reich, mm -hmm. Castaneda, Osho, mm. all of them dead of cancer. Okay. We have found this warning left by ancient priests. This warning says, if you will be developing your abilities without knowledge how it should be done, you will never cross the border of death. You will die. So we have found these texts. We understood the meaning. And first of all, we started to investigate and develop the system of defense for myself, for the uh, scientists and specialists I am working with. Mm -hmm. This is the key moment. Mm -hmm. And actually, this is the reason why I would say people in the nearest future, when 2012 will be very close to you, you should take in account that you should perfect, you should uh, develop your health. Otherwise, thousands, if I would say maybe even hundreds of, th of thousands of people, maybe millions, will not survive these changes. Mm -hmm. And one of the instruments which ancient used for this, I mean to preserve themselves against cancer, to step over the border of death, that was the pyramids mm -hmm. and so-called the wands of Horus. So, you know, metallic uh, I would say tubes, you know, which any of ancient Egyptian uh, pharaohs, I mean sculptures of pharaohs and priests, they have it in their hands. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book about it, which is called The Wands of Horse, okay. giving the ancient texts and explanations and ideas what stands behind this. I myself deeply understood that this is the key moment, and now we are developing it. And this is, this is one of the reasons why we are setting up now big stone pyramids to prepare ourselves, our health, before this very important event. I see. We should be prepared otherwise. Well, is this not um, also 
first of all, the pyramid is considered an ascension, a machine for an ascension. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, what you are talking about is this ability of the of the body to ascend spiritually through the use of this uh, no. medium. No, no, I wouldn't say like this. Everything okay. is much more simple. Okay. When you take when you when when you are talking about ascension, yes, in reality, it's different. Mm. No. I would say everything is much more simple. What you need to do is to correct a two, I mean, two flaws of time, which actually we call like in yang baka. We, sure. we think everybody think that according to a Western tradition, Eastern tradition, sorry. It's the like a human beginning, may, I mean male beginning, female beginning, or something like this, and we should uh, balance these powers, and then, well, everything will be okay, no illnesses. So, on one hand, that's more or less true, but the reality is quite different. This yin yang are two flaws of time moving to each other. Mm -hmm. So, if these flaws of time are balanced inside of you, you get a very interesting effect. You conservate your biological time. And then you can live 100 years, 200 years, 500 years, 1000 years, no problem. But mm -hmm. it should be balanced. Mm -hmm. Time. Pyramid is correcting time. Yes. Biological time and a human being. But this is the triangle. The top point, the top point of the triangle, symbolizes this unity. It means that you are talking just about symbolism. Sure. I am talking about mechanism. I understand. It's a different yes. thing. Sure, human being one thing, power another thing, and third one it's a bug ka human being trinity. It's like a plus and minus, minus in electricity. If you take plus and minus, immediately interaction between them starts. Yes. Three. Right. Okay? Right. It's a principle. Yes. So this triangle is not nothing else than the well, the symbol of principle. Yes. But we are talking about mechanism. Mm -hmm. How to use not a symbol. A symbol you can put here mm -hmm. and walk around. But <laughs> At the same time, if you have the symbol here, it doesn't mean that your inner time is balanced. No, completely no. Mm -hmm. We need to balance it. What is, this, your plan? To use what is your plan for going into the pyramid, using the pyramid to help balance this? It's not only just to go there mm -hmm. and to balance it. On one hand, yes. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's a practice. We are developing the practice. As soon or as long as we read some texts, ancient texts, we came to understanding how it works. Immediately we started, or we tried, well, to set up the pyramids and to use it. Mm -hmm. We made it. Mm -hmm. And we saw the results, very interesting results. We, now we want to develop it. To develop it, we need a real instrument, a real pyramid. Not like, you know, uh, for example, our dome now in Russia by Alexander Bolot. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, the pyramids, a few pyramids like this, they made of a wood, you know, uh, you know, like a plastic. Mm -hmm. No, it should be a pyramid of a special angles made of quartz, white quartz, mm -hmm. having a big own uh, weight. It should be a very, very mm -hmm. big one so that the, its own frequency would be lower and equal or somehow resonatable with the frequency on the level, a lower level with the planet Earth. So we are connecting the uh, pulsation, the most important pulsation, I, I call it like car beating of the planet Earth, to pyramids. So when they start to work together, inside of this field, human being just transformed unbelievably. So we need to do it and then we can make it. Otherwise we'll be just just talking stories. Mm -hmm. Just ideas. So if you build these pyramids in this one place, 
Is it your suggestion that eventually more pyramids are built? It would be great. On the planet? Yeah. At least we are, we are going here in Russia to set up more pyramids. Mm -hmm. Now we will be setting up at a certain area where we work now at least two pyramids or three. Mm -hmm. And at the same time we are now planning to set up a complex of pyramids mm -hmm. with, which will be having nine pyramids. Mm -hmm. A complex of nine pyramids. Sure, if we set up some complexes around the world, as ancient text says, energetic capacities of the planet affecting, positively affecting, growing of a human consciousness, will, it, it, will, it will affect, it will happen. It's a key moment. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it the other way. So if you want to develop it and to stimulate it, the pyramids is key moments. Mm -hmm. But the pyramids should be set up all over the planet. Now what about the indigo children? We interviewed Boriska mm -hmm. a few days ago and he has recall, as you know, um, having been in Nexus magazine mm -hmm. and you know about the article that was written about him and he has recall of his past life in, on Mars and he talked about um, the wars that went on and then he talks about, he's basically coming here as a young child with total recall do you, is there something that you know about these little children that are being born now that you see in a sense are balancing already these key elements of the positive and negative so that they almost don't necessarily need the pyramid to to be there already do you understand what i'm saying yeah i understand clearly uh -huh. And have you thought this about is the reason, this? This is the reason why I say pyramid have been and will be the key moments. Mm -hmm. the key moments. What about the people having these possibilities? Actually, there are much more people having these possibilities mm -hmm. that you even can imagine. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, most of them are not able to develop further mm -hmm. on a high level. The pyramid is is an instrument which is giving you a possibility to step over the border of death. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that development of inner abilities, are you an uh, indigo child or not, this development will affect your system and will cause problems with the health, especially cancer, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. To step over, we need to use knowledge and instruments. Understand. And pyramids are critical, critically necessary.